Hi everybody, and welcome to Brightly Storytime Live. I'm your host, Miss Linda, and I'm so happy to be here with you today, celebrating Eric Carl's birthday. Happy birthday, Eric Carl! I hear we have viewers tuning in today from all over the world. Where are you watching from? Awesome! Well, before we begin, who knows a fact about Eric Carl? Here's just a few. Eric spent his life creating art, including writing and illustrating books. He loved nature since he was a little boy taking walks through the woods. And later, we'll learn his favorite animal. We have a range of fun things in today's show, from read-alouds to crafts to special guests, and I'm so excited to watch it all with you. Before we get started, a reminder to open up the chat at the bottom of the screen and toggle it to display messages from everyone. We can't wait to hear from you. To help celebrate this special day, we were lucky enough to visit the Eric Carl Museum of Picture Book Art in Amherst, Massachusetts. If you're looking to learn more about Eric Carl and the art behind picture books, it's the place to go. What kind of museums have you all been to before? What sorts of exhibits did you see? Let's take a peek at what you can find at the Carl. Today I'm visiting the Eric Carl Museum of Picture Book Art in Amherst, Massachusetts to learn a little bit more about all things Eric Carl. Joining me is David Feinstein. He's the literacy educator here at the museum. Thank you for joining me, David. Thanks for visiting. So can you tell us a little bit about what visitors can expect to find here at the museum? I'd love to. There's so much to see and experience here at the Carl. There are three galleries with exhibitions of picture book art from around the world. There's an art studio where you can make your own artwork. We have a reading library filled with books and an outdoor meadow where you can walk and see what's growing around our beautiful apple orchard. Oh wow, there are so many fun things to do here. I can't wait to check it out. So David, tell us a little bit more about Eric Carl and how he came to have a museum. Well, in 2002, Eric Carl and his wife Barbara opened the Eric Carl Museum of Picture Book Art here in Amherst, Massachusetts. Before that, they had traveled to Japan and they saw several picture book museums when they were there, and that inspired them to create their own picture book museum here in the United States. And today, the Eric Carl Museum is the international champion of picture book art, and this year we're celebrating our 20th anniversary. Oh, wow! Now, David, what is your most favorite part of working at the museum? That's a great question, because there's so much I love about this museum. I would have to say my favorite part is getting to share stories with visitors and audiences online. Picture books have this amazing power to inspire and connect people across ages and backgrounds, you know, children, parents, grandparents, artists, writers, librarians, educators. And here at the museum, I get to see that magic in action every day, inviting us all to discover and create and share our own stories. That's a wonderful answer. Thank you. So we'll be checking in with the museum throughout the show today, so make sure you keep watching. Oh, the Carl was so beautiful. I hope you all get a chance to visit it someday if you're ever in Massachusetts. I hope that look at the museum puts you in the mood for our very first read aloud. This story is one I bet you're all familiar with. It's The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And today, we're lucky to have author Angela D. Terlitzi to read it to us. And after that, we have illustrator Rafael Lopez to read us the Spanish version. Do any of you speak Spanish or know any Spanish words? Well, this is a great chance to learn some new words if you don't already know them. Let's get reading. Hi, I'm children's book author Angela D. Terlizzi, and I am so excited to be with you here today at the Eric Carle Museum of Picture Book Art. 
It was actually here at this museum 20 years ago on opening day that I met the legendary author and illustrator, my friend, Eric Carle. And so I'm especially honored and excited to read with you today my favorite book of his, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Would you like to read it with me? Great. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and... He was a beautiful butterfly. And that is my favorite book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Good morning y buenos dias. I am Rafael Lopez and this is my studio. Welcome to the studio. This is where everything takes place. I am the illustrator of two recent books, The Year We Learned to Fly and Just Ask. And we are today celebrating Eric Carl's birthday. Awesome. Happy birthday. Feliz cumpleaños, Eric. And I was very honored to be invited to read to you The Very Hungry Caterpillar, but in Espanol, La Oruga Hambrienta. Eric Carle has been a huge influence in my work. I love the simplicity of his work. I love how colorful it is. And without any doubt, he has been a huge, huge influence. So um, I'm very honored, Eric. Happy birthday to you. And without any further ado, let's go and read the book in Espanol. Hasta luego. Al claro de luna, reposa un huevecillo sobre una hoja. Un domingo de mañana, Apenas salió el tibio sol. Del huevo salió una oruga diminuta y muy hambrienta. Enseguida empezó a buscar comida. El lunes comió, comió y atravesó una manzana, pero aún seguía hambrienta. El martes comió, comió y atravesó dos peras, pero aún seguía hambrienta. El miércoles comió, comió y atravesó tres ciruelas, pero aún seguía hambrienta. El jueves comió, comió y atravesó cuatro fresas, pero aún seguía hambrienta. El viernes comió, comió y atravesó cinco naranjas, pero aún seguía hambrienta. El sábado comió, comió y atravesó un bizcocho de chocolate, un helado, un pepinillo, un trozo de queso suizo, una rodaja de salami, una paleta, un pastel de cerezas, 
una salchicha, un pastelito y una tajada de sandía. Esa noche tuvo un tremendo dolor de estómago. Al día siguiente, era domingo otra vez. La oruga comió una hermosa hoja bien verde y se sintió mucho mejor. Ya no tenía hambre, ni era una pequeña oruga. Ahora era una oruga grande y gorda. Construyó una casita a su alrededor, un capullo, y se encerró en ella por más de dos semanas. Un día hizo un agujero en el capullo, empujó un poco para salir y... se encontró convertida en una bellísima mariposa. ¡Feliz cumpleaños, Eric! Did you all enjoy those read alouds? Did you learn any new words? Amazing! Next up, we have a read aloud by someone you may recognize. It's our friend David from the Eric Carl Museum reading Today is Monday. This one is especially fun because you can sing along with it. Here we go! Hello, my name's David. I'm the literacy educator here at the Eric Carl Museum of Picture Book Art and we love to read and share books with visitors and I am so excited to share a really fun book by Eric Carl based on a children's song called Today is Monday and as we read this book together we're going to use our eyes to look closely at the pictures and our mouths to sing all the different foods and days of the week. So before we start our book, let's warm up with a little song. You might know it. Get your hands really big and open and sing, open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep and crawl and creep and crawl them right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth, but do not let them in. Fingers don't go in your mouth. What goes in your mouth? Food. We're going to see a lot of food in this book. You look ready for our story. And on our cover, we see Cat. What do you think Cat is getting ready to do? eat some food. Yeah, they've got their knife and their fork and their spoon. And on our end papers, we see these beautiful pink stripes and orange dots and green squiggles. Now sometimes the end papers match the cover of a book. Did we see this pattern anywhere on the cover? Hmm, that's right, on the tablecloth. You're looking really carefully. And there's Cat running away with the fork. And who else wants to eat? Dog's got a spoon and bird's got a knife. And on our title page, looks like the table is set. There's the fork and the knife and the spoon and the plate. And what's on the plate? Hmm, nothing. There's no food there. Maybe we'll see some food on Monday. Today is Monday by Eric Carle. Today is Monday. And what is porcupine eating? String beans. Okay, let's sing. Today is Monday, today is Monday, Monday string beans, all you hungry children, come and eat it up. And after Monday comes, what day? Tuesday. And on Tuesday, what is snake eating? Spaghetti. All right. Let's sing it again. 
Today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. Tuesday spaghetti. Monday. What did we eat Monday? Do you remember? String beans. Monday string beans. All you hungry children, come and eat it up. And after Tuesday, what day comes next? Wednesday. Oh, and on Wednesday, what is elephant eating? They're sticking their long trunk down here into a big bowl of soup. Do you think we can sing all the days so far? Let's try it. Today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Wednesday, soup. Tuesday, what was Tuesday? Spaghetti, Monday, string beans, all you hungry children, come and eat it up. After Wednesday, what day is after Wednesday? Thursday, Ooh. and Cat has found a big chunk of roast beef. I don't think they want to share it either. They really want to eat it. All right, let's, let's sing again all the days of the week so far. Today is Thursday. Today is Thursday. Thursday, roast beef. Wednesday, soup. Tuesday, spaghetti. Monday, string beans. All you hungry children, come and eat it up. After Thursday comes Friday. Oh, and on Friday, Pelican has caught a big fresh fish. Mm. All right, let's sing it again. Today is Friday. Today is Friday. Friday, fresh fish. Thursday, roast beef. Wednesday. Zoop, Tuesday, spaghetti, Monday, string beans. All you hungry children, come and eat it up. After Friday is Saturday. And on Saturday, what has a red fox caught? Mmm, chicken. Today is Saturday, today is Saturday. Saturday, chicken, Friday, fresh fish. Thursday, roast beef. Wednesday, soup. Tuesday, spaghetti. Monday, string beans. All you hungry children, come and eat it up. Okay, after Saturday is what day? Sunday. And on Sunday, what has monkey found to eat? Mmm, ice cream. Oh, that looks yummy. This is the last day of the week. Do you think we can sing all the foods and all the days of the week that we've learned? Let's try it together. Are you ready? On three. One, two, three. Today is Sunday. Today is Sunday, Sunday, ice cream, Saturday, chicken, Friday, fresh fish, Thursday, roast beef, Wednesday, soup, Tuesday, spaghetti, Monday, string beans. All you hungry children, come and eat it up. There's the bird saying, all you hungry children, come and eat it up. Have we seen any kids? No. Where are they? Hmm. Let's see. Oh, here they are. All the kids are sitting down at this big table to eat all of the foods that we sang together. And ooh, there's a cat and a dog who also want to eat. And can you find all the other animals that we saw in the book? 
Can you find them on this picture? If you look closely, you'll see on the wall, there's porcupine and snake, elephant, cat, pelican, fox, and monkey. And there they are, all the hungry children eating it up. And this picture in the book is part of our exhibition, Raining Cats and Dogs, that's in the galleries right now. Thank you so much, friends, for reading with me today and sharing this really fun book by Eric Carle. Today is Monday. Keep sharing stories, keep singing, and have a great day. Thanks so much for such a fun read aloud, David. I think that song is going to be stuck in my head for a while now. It's so catchy. Our next read aloud isn't a song, but it's still just as fun. Please welcome author and illustrator Grace Lynn to read The Very Busy Spider. Hi everyone, I'm Grace Lynn and I'm so happy to be with you to celebrate Eric Carle's birthday. Now, I am also a children's book author and illustrator. I've made many books, as you can see behind me, and in fact, my very first book was a book about me and my mother in a garden. Now, when I was young and gardening with my mother, there were a lot of bugs around, and I did not like that. In fact, I didn't like bugs at all, but it was Eric Carle's books, books about caterpillars, ladybugs, and spiders that got me over my fear of bugs, and now I kind of like them. So today, I'd like to share with you this book, The Very Busy Spider by Eric Carle for his birthday. Early one morning, the swind blew a spider across the field. A thin, silky thread trailed from her body the spider landed on a fence post near a farmyard and began to spin a web with her silky thread. So there's the spider, and there's her silky thread. Doesn't it look like a piece of the sun? Nay, nay, said the horse. Want to go for a ride? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. So there's the spider, and she's gone all the way across. Moo, moo, said the cow. Want to eat some grass? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. So there's the spider. She's gone across now. Ba, ba, bleated the sheep. Want to run in the meadow? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. And now her web is almost kind of like a star shape. Meh, meh, said the goat. Want to jump on the rocks? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. Hey, do you notice that with all these animals, there's this little pesky fly that's in the picture too. Hmm, I wonder what it's doing. Oink, oink, grunted to the pig. Want to roll in the mud? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. And there's the pig, and there's that fly again. Woof, woof, barked the dog. Want to chase a cat? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. And so there's the web. It's getting much bigger and much more elaborate. Meow, meow, cried the cat. Want to take a nap? The spider didn't answer. She was very busy spinning her web. So there's that web. It's really looking a lot like a spider web now. And yeah, and there's that fly. She's still around too. Quack, quack, called the duck. Want to go for a swim? The spider didn't answer. She had now finished her web. So look at this web, it's so beautiful, isn't it? Cock-a-doodle-doo, crowed the rooster. Wanna catch a pesky fly? And the spider caught the fly in her web. 
just like that. Well, that takes care of the pesky fly, doesn't it? Ooh, ooh, asked the owl. Who built this beautiful web? The spider didn't answer. She had fallen asleep. It had been a very, very busy day. But now you can see how beautiful this web is. But I think that the spider definitely deserved her rest after working so hard, don't you? And that's the end of the book. And that was the book, The Very Busy Spider by Eric Carl. I hope you liked it. What a fun story. Have you been enjoying the wonderful art in all the stories so far? Would you like to know more about the art? While we were at the Eric Carl Museum, Chief Curator Ellen Kiter was kind enough to give us a tour of their current exhibition. Let's take a look at what fun things she can tell us about Eric Carl's art. Welcome. I'm here with Ellen Kiter. She's the Chief Curator here at the Eric Carl Museum of Picture Book Art, and she's going to give us a tour of the current exhibition. Now I hear there are a lot of furry friends featured in this artwork today, so I'm so excited. Ellen, can you tell us a little bit about the current collection? Absolutely. The exhibition is titled Eric Carl, Raining Cats and Dogs. Cats were Eric's most favorite pet and animal, and they appear throughout his picture books. So it seemed a perfect subject for an exhibition. And as a dog lover, personally, um, we had to put in a few dogs as well. Maybe you got inspiration from some of the artwork here and want to make a piece featuring your own favorites. So Ellen, what's the first piece you're going to tell us about today? Well, I think we'll start with Purple Cat from Brown Bear, Brown Bear. Here is our friend Purple Cat, which you may notice is no longer purple. Poor Purple Cat has faded to Pink Cat. Uh, when Eric Carle created this collage in 1984, he was using store-bought tissue papers. So they faded and discolored over time. Um, soon after this book was published, he switched to archival materials and tissue papers, which held their color much longer. Oh, how interesting. So Purple Cat became Pink Cat. <laughs> This is the dog from Eric Carle's book, The Very Lonely Firefly. It is an alternate image, which means that it was not used in the final publication. Eric Carle often made many pictures for a single image. He wanted to get the colors and composition just the way he wanted it. Oh, so he would make different choices of the same picture before deciding which one to use. Exactly. Now this picture looks familiar. Yes, this is the cover design or composition for Today is Monday, but this particular collage was not used on the cover, so we call it an alternate image. This is actually the collage on the cover of Today is Monday. Miss Linda, can you find the difference? Oh, can you find the difference? I think the color in the background is different. That's right, exactly, good job. So these two collages are from Eric Carle's book, The Very Busy Spider. Uh, what I particularly love about this, and which most readers probably do not know, is that the dog is actually a portrait of Eric Carle's pet, Tok. Tok was a beautiful white Samoyed, and Eric and his wife, Bobby, named Tok after the canine character in the book, The Phantom Tollbooth, written by Norton Juster. So here we see a collage of Eric Carl's cat, Fifi. Uh, he made this collage in 2014, but actually Fifi lived with him in his New York City apartment in the 1970s. Eric described her as a long-haired beauty who liked to play fetch with string beans. I particularly love that Eric included a photograph of himself at age three, holding a group of kittens in his lap and looking incredibly happy. Uh, Fifi actually appears in another one of Eric Carle's books, Roosters Off to See the World, which was published in 1972. And here is Fifi again, along with another of Eric's cats, Mitzi. And who is this up here? 
This is Eric's grandmother's cat named Tiger, who he describes as a big, fat, fluffy cat. And Tiger is the cover cat for his autobiographical book, Flora and Tiger. Oh, thank you so much for the tour, Ellen. It has been so fun. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. That was so much fun. Do you want to try creating your own tissue paper art now? I'm going to walk you through the steps and then I hope you'll give it a try yourself. After I show you the process, you'll get a chance to craft along with our guest author, Alyssa Holder, and her family. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to the Carl Art Studio. Do you see all of this beautiful artwork around me? People of all ages come here from all over the world to play with materials and make art. We saw so much amazing artwork of Eric Carl's in the gallery, I'm inspired to create my own collage. We saw lots of pictures of cats and dogs, so I think I'm going to make a collage of my cat, Ziggy. You can make a picture of your pet too. It can be real or imaginary. When you make a collage, you take pieces of paper and put them on a larger piece of paper to make a picture. I'll be using tissue paper. Tissue paper can come in different colors, or be painted or drawn on in different patterns and designs. You can use whatever paper you have at home. That might be newspaper or construction paper, paper from magazines, even wrapping paper can be used. When I think about my cat Ziggy, I think about what shapes I can use to make their picture. I might use a circle to make their face, or triangles for ears, maybe ovals for eyes. I can use scissors to change the shape of my paper, or I can get creative. I could fold my paper, or tear it, or even crumple it up. Oh, this is going to be fun. Once I have my different shapes of paper, I'm going to move them around to see where I want them. Now that I have my paper where I want to glue them, I'm going to take my glue and glue down my paper. You can also use crayons to add more detail in your collage. And there you go. Look how fun it is to create art. What will you make? Oh, I can't wait to see all the great art you'll make. Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa Holder and I am the co-author of I Am Smart, I Am Blessed, I Can Do Anything. And I am here I with my son, anything. Ion. Hello. And my daughter, Alea. Say hello. Hello. And we are celebrating Eric Carl's birthday. Should we say happy birthday to Eric Carl? Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Eric Carl. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Eric Carl. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Okay, so we have our last whisker. We got all the glue on. We're ready. Should we show it to them? Because we're all done now. You ready? You want to show it to them, Malaya? Can you hold it? Look at it! We did such a great job! Alea, what is it? What did we make? Can you tell us? What is, Alyssa! What is it? What animal is it? A cat! A cat! Very it's a cat! <laughs> yes, it's a cat. It's our tissue paper cat. Okay, so now I think we should give Eric Carl a big happy birthday. We did such a good job working together. Are we ready? Let's say happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Eric Carl. Carl. Can you say that? Happy birthday, Eric Carl. <laughs> good job. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Not yet. Oh, why not? Because I have to say something. Okay, what do you want to say? Happy birthday, Eric Carl, and this was your book. This was your gift, and I hope you like your new cat. Bye. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy 
birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eric Carver. Happy birthday to you. Okay, bye. thank you. Bye. bye. Say yeah. bye, Lily. Bye. <laughs> Did you all get a good start on your craft? Don't worry if you still have more to do on it. You can keep working on it during the next read aloud. Here's Alyssa's sister and co-author, Zuleika Holder Young, with her daughter to read The Very Lonely Firefly for us. Hello, my name is Zuleika Holder Young. I'm the author of the book, I Am Smart, I Am Blessed, I Can Do Anything, and the upcoming book, I Am Amazing, co-written with my sister, Alyssa Holder. We are joining you here today in the celebration of the life and work of an amazing author, Eric Carl. My daughter, Aria, here with me, Hello. loves to read, and she is going to assist me as I read you a story. So, Aria, what is your favorite book by Eric Carl, and why? Hmm. My favorite book has to be, by Eric Carl, has to be The Very Hungry Caterpillar. I really like that book because I'm really interested in art and I love the way that Eric Carle illustrated his books. I love that choice because it's also my favorite, as you guys can see. Uh, it's my favorite because it's one of the first books that I can remember reading in my school library. I remember it being one of those first books that had vibrant colors and amazing illustrations and I love the way that Eric Carle always includes those in his books. The book I'm going to read today has the same beautiful illustrations and a wonderful story about an amazing creature, the firefly. Okay, Aria, please help me as I read The Very Lonely Firefly, written and illustrated by Eric Carle. As the sun set, a little firefly was born. It stretched its wings and flew off into the darkening sky. It was a lonely firefly, and it flashed its light, searching for other fireflies. The firefly saw a light and flew toward it, but it was not another firefly. It was a light bulb lighting up the night. Hear that noise? The firefly saw a light and flew toward it, but it was not another firefly. It was a candle flickering in the night. What's going on? The firefly saw a light and flew toward it, but it was not another firefly. It was a flashlight shining in the night. Quiet out there. The firefly saw a light and flew toward it. But it was not another firefly. It was a lantern glowing in the night. What is it? Hey, stop fighting. The firefly saw several lights and flew toward them. But they were not other fireflies. There was a dog, grrr, Bow wow. <laughs> and a cat, meow, yes. And an owl, their eyes reflecting the lights. Toot, toot. <laughs> the firefly saw a light and flew toward it, but it was not another firefly. It was a car's headlights flooding the night. Look, wow. It's beautiful. The firefly saw many lights and flew toward them, but they were not other fireflies. They were fireworks, sparkling and glittering and shimmering in the night. When all was quiet, the firefly flew through the night, flashing its light and looking and searching again. Then the very lonely firefly saw what it had been looking for. A group of fireflies flashing their lights. Now the firefly wasn't lonely, anymore. The end. <laughs> I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of you for watching and celebrating the birthday of Eric Carl with us. A special shout out 
to the team at Brightly Storytime for including us in the celebration. Now let's say a big happy birthday on three. One, two, three. Happy birthday! We hope that you enjoyed reading with us. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you both for the reading. Our next guest is super fun. We met some friends from the Very Hungry Caterpillar show to help us read the next two stories. What fun friends do you think we will see? Let's take a look. Hello again from a new location. Here we're going to meet some friends we've made along the way today. They're coming to visit us from the Very Hungry Caterpillar live show. And why, here's one of them now. Hello, purple cat. <laughs> Something looks different about you. Weren't you pink last time we saw you? Friends at home, do you remember why that was? Here's a hint. It was a special fact from our gallery visit. Thank you so much for stopping by, Purple Cat. <laughs> Is there anyone else who'd like to say hi to our viewers? friends from the previous stories. Hello, cat. Hello, dog. <laughs> Are you here because you're excited about the next story we're going to read? Oh! <laughs> Spoiler alert though, this one doesn't have any cats or dogs in it, but it is a super fun, super colorful story called The Very Hungry Caterpillar Eats Lunch. It's time for lunch. How many different colored foods can the very hungry caterpillar eat? He starts with red, one bowl of tomato soup, and juicy strawberries on the side. Delicious! What's your favorite red food? It looks like the caterpillar is a big fan of strawberries. How about something orange? Mac and cheese, please. What are some other orange foods? Orange is an easy color to think of a food for. There's always oranges. Do you know any other words with two meanings like that? It's taco day. He crunches through the yellow shell topped with peppers and eats some rice piled high. Is he still hungry? Of course. What else can he eat here that's yellow? Can you think of another yellow food? That's right, cheese. Look at all that green. Lettuce, zucchini, broccoli, peas. There are so many tasty veggies to eat. Which should he try? How about a bite of each? Can you guess his favorite? Look at how much the caterpillar loves to eat his greens. <laughs> Do you have a favorite green food? Are those blue lollipops? Is he eating candy? Oh no, let's get back to lunch. Oh no, Caterpillar, don't eat candy in the middle of lunch. Can everyone at home think of a healthier blue food option?
that sandwich on toasted brown bread sure looks good. And if he's hungry for more, there are sweet and salty treats nearby. What's in your favorite sandwich? What would you put on a brown sandwich? Maybe you could add a whole rainbow of toppings. Two colors together? He gives this black and white lunch a try, and it's delicious. A cheesy quesadilla and black beans are the perfect pair. What are some other foods that are two different colors? I bet you can think of a ton of them. Look at these purple stir-fry ingredients. The very hungry caterpillar takes a few tastes before they're chopped up and put into the pan. Would you like to try some too? Can you think of any other purple foods? I know! Plums are purple. Look! A lunch that's pink. One hot dog, a slice of watermelon, and some grapefruit juice make a meal that's just right for a picnic. Pink is a fun one to think of foods for. Can you think of the last pink food you had? And picnics are better with... Friends! They join the very hungry caterpillar for a midday meal. Together, they eat a lunch that's as colorful as a rainbow. What would you like for lunch? Oh, the caterpillar is having such a good time. Who would you want to have a picnic with? And where would you go? I think nothing can beat a picnic in the park in the summer. Thanks so much for reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar Eats Lunch with me. I hope you enjoyed thinking up all sorts of colorful foods. Now, this event is all about honoring and celebrating Eric Carle on his birthday. And I think this next book is the perfect way to do so. It's called Happy Birthday from The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Are you all ready to read it with me? Today is your day. You are standing tall, climbing high, shooting for the moon. On this day, you open your presence. Dance with your friends. Enjoy your cake. Today you will feel extra special. But always remember, to me, you're special every day. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Eric Carl and to everyone else who is celebrating a birthday. That was so much fun. Now, after all that reading, I hope you are ready to dance. 
Our friends at the Little Gym put together a super fun dance for you all to try out. Welcome to the Little Gym. We are so excited to celebrate Eric Carl's birthday with you. I'm so excited to introduce our very special guest, the Very Hungry Caterpillar. We would love for you to celebrate with us. So come along, stand up, and dance along with the Very Hungry Caterpillar. And that brings us to the end of our celebration. So if you liked that dance, be sure to check out your local The Little Gym for more fun activities. And thank you so much to all of our guests today for taking the time to celebrate with us. I hope all our viewers enjoyed everything just as much as I did. Be sure to follow all of our wonderful guests on social and check out the links to all of today's books in the chat. We hope to see you at the rest of our events this year as well. Our next event will be back to school themed, so be on the lookout for signups in August. Thanks everyone! Bye!